Good evening and welcome to Business PNG, your weekly look at business news and updates. The 2015 PNG budget is a continuation of the overall strategy of the two previous budget and illustrates the government's determination to stay the course with the agenda it has set. It continues the funding priorities of the major sectors it has identified, being in particular health, education and infrastructure development. The 2015 PNG budget is a deficit budget consistent with the government's strategy of the last two years. Accompanied by a 2014 supplementary budget intended to reallocate expenditure to high priority areas as the government has stated, to prevent a blowout of expenditure over the remaining part of 2014. The government states that Papua New Guinea is expected to grow some 15.5% in 2015 compared to the 21% it predicted some time ago. This is a reflection of the impact at the early start of the LNG project deliveries, which drove the 2014 growth rate from an expected 5% to 8.4%. The government was pleased to point out the substantial reallocation to high priority areas of well over 1 billion kina and also that it was on track to meet major expenditure commitments for 2014. A number of high priority areas were listed where the percentage of the annual allocation spent for the year to date was between 60% and 91%. One of the historical issues that has faced the PNG budget process from time to time has been the inability to actually spend funds allocated. The theme of the 2015 budget was building our nation and providing opportunities for our people and the government listed five key priorities and they were enhancing opportunities for our people by building the foundation of the country while recognizing the need for macroeconomic stability promote the efficient and effective delivery of major projects, increase direct funding to the provinces and districts, continue to support policy priorities in health, education and infrastructure, continue to strengthen the justice sector. Total revenue and grants for 2015 are expected to total 13.92 billion kina, while budgeted total expenditure is expected to be 16.19 billion kina, leading to a deficit for 2015 of 2.27 billion kina. This amounts to 4.4 to GDP, and the government states it is a step to return the government's budget deficit to a balanced position by 2017. The government is also predicting a substantial improvement in its debt position to a ratio of debt to GDP of 27.8% in 2015, considerably better than the target of 35% originally set last year. The government is still clearly committed to supporting the pillars that it has identified in past budgets, being health, education, infrastructure development, increasing funding direct to the provinces and districts. As of last year, the government also identified increasing the efficiency of the public sector and its current review of the taxation system as priorities. The budget contained no major tax changes of note, so it is clearly awaiting the outcome of the taxation review. Business PNG spoke to Newcrest Country Manager Peter Aitzi at the recent Deloitte budget breakfast. Mr. Aitzi, thank you so much for joining Business PNG uh, to talk about the 2015 national budget that's been handed down. First of all, your overview of the budget for next year? Well, thank you, Mariba, for the invitation. Uh, look, the budget, uh, is, uh, uh, as tabled, has been very well received by the business community. I think uh, there's no significant changes in there, and it speaks to a, a stability within uh, the, uh, the economy of PNG and encourages business, in a sense, to, to be uh, confident about the government's approach to the way they're managing the, the economy. Uh, for business, how business-friendly do you see the 2015 national budget? Well, look, um, you know, there's no changes in ta taxation, um, so on that front, uh, I think there's no surprises. Um, I think there's po probably more work to be done, and, and that'll uh, take uh, take place over the next few months as the tax review panel uh, completes its work. And I suppose at that point, uh, the business community will know if there are any significant changes to taxation and levels of taxation within the country. So that's probably really where the where the test will be. You mentioned uh, taxation, and from reports, uh, only 15% of, of people pay taxes, and that contributes about 40% uh, of, of, of total revenue. Do you see the, the chances of this uh, figure increasing, given that uh, IRC has put so much effort into revamping its operations to make, uh, make its work more effective? Yeah, look, I think from the government's point of view, there's a, there's a tremendous opportunity there. Um, if they are able to uh, improve the collection of, of, uh, of income via these streams. 
salaries and wages tax represents a significant part of, of their income. Uh, company tax also represents a significant part of their income as well. And both of those areas uh, perhaps uh, would benefit uh, from uh, a more robust collection uh, process and strengthen systems there just to, uh, to make sure that the government is picking up all, uh, all taxpayers in, in, those, in those areas. And of course the obvious question that everybody uh, talks about uh, implementation of the budget. How confident are you given that we have a record budget of uh, 16.2 billion for 2015? How confident are you that uh, the priorities of, of, of the budget will, will be implemented? Yeah, look, uh, I think the government, that's the, really the challenge for the government now is uh, how they implement the budget. Um, the focus areas are education, health and uh, infrastructure and law and order and those are the areas that we've been challenged in the past but uh, I think the government needs to be commended uh, in its commitment to those areas because they are in a sense uh, pillars for the for future growth within the economy. Um, so the focus really needs to be around the implementation of those specific uh, uh, levels, of those specific funding that flows to those areas mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that uh, the targets for those, for those areas uh, are delivered. And uh, finally is it a good budget? Yeah, look, I think it is. Um, based on the response from, from uh, business uh, and probably from the, the general community, it would seem that it's a good budget. Um, it sets us on a path now uh, in uh, 2017 to return to a balanced budget. So that's a positive. Um, but there are some un unknowns in there, and, and uh, those unknowns are, are the LNG revenues that uh, will eventually come on shore. Um, some disposal of, of or some, uh, some revenue generation through the sale of uh, uh, landowner uh, or the uh, uh, per uh, percentage of the MPC uh, MPCP uh, shareholdings that uh, will go to, to landowners. Uh, so those things need to, you know, those items need to be uh, uh, concluded uh, to really bring forward the revenues that the government are anticipating. And given your uh, expertise in the resource sector, It'll be pretty uh, nervous times for you ahead with the tax review uh, report coming out soon now? Yeah, look, we'd remind the government in respect to the tax review um, to really look at the performance of the, uh, the resource sector globally and really uh, get a sense of the, the kind of pressure and challenges that have been faced by the, uh, by the industry uh, on the global scale and, and understand that any kind of changes that are made to the, to, to, to the tax levels within the resource sector uh, may have a detrimental effect uh, because of the level of competition there for, for investors and when they look at PNG they want to be confident that they can invest here with certainty and security uh, and that they're able to uh, return a, a, a reasonable level of profit uh, for their shareholders. All right, Mr. Aitzi, thank you so much for joining us on Business PNG. Thank you, Marupa. Thank you. After the break, we hear about the National Airports Corporation's move into the global aviation industry. Papua New Guinea is now represented in the global aviation industry by the National Airports Corporation. Drawing from global connections, National Airports Corporation will contribute meaningfully on matters of the airport economics, affecting the world's airports for the benefit of our beautiful country, including the Pacific. MTV journalist Fabian Hakalitz spoke to the Acting Chief Executive Officer Joseph Tupiri on the achievements.
The National Airport Corporation is now part of the wider discussion in the global aviation industry. Acting Chief Executive Officer Joseph Tupiri represented Papua New Guinea and the Pacific is a member of the Airport Council International World Economic Committee in a meeting at Tel Aviv, Israel. The meeting opens business opportunities for Papua New Guinea in the next three years. It is a good opportunity for us. Uh, the, the world is getting smaller. We, we can't just be tucked away in this side of the world. We need to, uh, when we have the opportunity and when people uh, at, this, at that level uh, recognize that we can add value to the discussions that happen at, at that level, um, we can uh, add our perspective you know, in terms of the challenges we face the, uh, and, and the opportunities we have. Uh, and so for us, it's, uh, for me personally, it's an it's a honor and a privilege to, to uh, represent not only PNZ but the Pacific on this Asia World Economics Committee. Um, and that's for three years, uh, this year, 2015 and 2016. So for me, it's a privilege and, and I will uh, you know, want to bring uh, value uh, for for what it is worth to, to help to build our airports and infrastructure in Papua New Guinea to set the strategic direction for NAC. Airports in PNG and the Pacific region will gain much true capacity development through the Airport Council International programs. Drawing from global connections, it will contribute meaningfully on matters of airport economic that's affecting the world's airports. As, I'm, as a member of the uh, World Economics Committee, I am also responsible for making sure that uh, the Pacific Islands airports also are properly represented, which uh, NAC now has a strategy now to work with our neighboring countries within the Pacific to, uh, to discuss ideas such as uh, an association for the uh, airports uh, within the uh, Pacific and uh, begin to set up regional training facilities for uh, the airports within within the Pacific here in Port Moresby and in PNG, uh, in association with um, organisations like uh, Singapore Aviation Academy, which we have already dis have had discussions with, and are about to sign an MOU. And we want also bring Airports Council International uh, through my membership to the uh, World Economics Committee, as well, and they have access to all the resources to provide training for the Pacific Island countries and the airports here in Port Moresby and PNG, so that's, that's really, uh, uh, we are doing our bit, to say the least. NAC is doing our bit to, to work towards the government's drive to make sure that we are leading in the, in the Pacific. So. The meeting is an avenue to promote the economic interest of airports and the communities they serve through the sharing of experience and best practice and the development of common policies and programs. Issues and challenges are the same, but what Papua New Guinea needs to do is to develop all the airports throughout the country. We can't, in terms of the size and scope, we can't compete with big airports, you know? but we can uh, improve our efficiency, the economics, the functionality, uh, and, and, and be as good as any other um, within our class in terms of dictated by passenger numbers, the size of the industry, uh, the size of the players, and at the same time uh, have capacity for growth, uh, to have a strategy for growth moving forward, to develop new routes. Uh, as we improve our safety, security, service levels, convenience for processing, I strongly believe that we can attract more airlines as, as transit through, through Port Moresby and our regional airports. And, and the government is heavily investing. The government is heavily investing in infrastructure to other country and airports are one of the priority infrastructure areas as well. So for the challenge for NAEC, myself and our team is, we want to make sure that the money that is invested in airport infrastructure is optimized. So because we have to make decisions on the run, we have to strategize quickly. We have to make decisions that is in the best interest of the country and the organization and the 
to improve our infrastructure and build new infrastructure, we need to have access to the best. The National Airports Corporation will be focused in capacity building opportunities that will be achieved through training as the strategy and way forward. Risk opportunities like safety, security and maintenance must also be managed in airports as Tupiri explains. Uh, the ownership, investment structures, um, uh, charging uh, principles on lending charges and, and, uh, and uh, security charges uh, and all the other charges we charge to airline users and operators and then the kind of mix of revenue that we, we, we have opportunity to generate within uh, commercial development and the airport city concepts globally. So those are really the focus areas of this committee. Uh, but in the midst of that, uh, uh, more operant issues of safety, security, uh, issues that are, that are risks or opportunities that need to be managed uh, from an airport economics perspective is discussed at this level as well. So we look at global trends in terms of risks and how that will affect uh, traffic forecasts and then affect the bottom line of the airports globally. The global aviation industry has four major international associations and organizations. ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization for regulators that PNG CASA is a member to. IATA, International Air Transport Association for airlines and air travel service providers like the National Flag Carrier and New Guinea. ACI, Airport Council International, Global Airports Association that currently has over 800 members with four regional office. CANSO, Air Traffic Control Organizations that PNG Air Services Limited is a member to. One of the things that we, we want to get right at NAC is going from the investing so much in knowledge, all right, knowing and understanding the concepts, which is important. But we do also want to, at the same time, uh, make sure that we enhance and improve the understanding of the issues we have and actually resolve them. So we, the way we're structuring the program and we've successfully just delivered one with assistance from Airport Council International, I might add, at a very, very reduced cost to taxpayers, uh, which is about 60% less than uh, the, the, the next consultant, you know, I uh, was uh, quoting for. So not only are we saving money, uh, but, but we're getting the best uh, training. And not only are we getting the best training, but we are enhancing understanding. The next committee meeting will be in February 2015 at London, jointly hosted by the Airport Council International and World Bank. The meeting coincides with the Airport Council International World Airport Economic Finance Conference and World Bank's Investment Symposium. And then our strategy moving forward as a government, as a people uh, within our region uh, and taking our place in the world. So that's really what's driving us to, to become uh, members of, our, of that organization and that committee. And, and, and that's um, exciting for us moving forward. Yeah. Coming up, the Oxford Business Group talks about their country analysis, the report Papua New Guinea 2014. With the growth in the country's economy and the global interest, many companies and individuals are looking at investing in the country's growing business sector. Oxford Business Group recently launched their third consecutive report based on Papua New Guinea's business climate and in-depth insights into the different sectors that will help individuals and companies understand the business sector in Papua New Guinea. 
Oxford Business Group is a global publishing research and consultancy firm which publishes economic intelligence on the markets of Africa, Asia, Middle East and Latin America through its range of print and online products. The critically acclaimed economic and business reports have become the leading source of business intelligence on developing countries in the regions they cover. Business PNG sat down with OBG PNG's country director, Maho Rosa, and editorial manager, Mark Vendetti, as they deciphered the role of the annual report to Papua New Guinea's emerging economy. Basically what we do is we provide information on emerging economies, on emerging countries, uh, more than 37 at the moment, in uh, Latin America, in Africa, in Asia, uh, and in the Middle East in order to nourish investment, in order to give this information for developed countries, uh, for other countries that want to do business um, here, for example. Uh, so basically what we do is we have teams on the ground on all of these countries. We are invited by one of the uh, authorities of the countries who open the doors for us in order to have meetings from uh, all of the leaders, from the prime minister, the ministries, uh, the private sector, the public sector, the chambers and the embassies, uh, in order to get the inside edge of what's going on. The report, Papua New Guinea 2014, marks the culmination of more than 10 months of field research by a team of analysts from the Oxford Business Group. The publication assesses the trends and developments across the economy, including macroeconomics, infrastructure, banking and other sectorial developments. OBG's third analysis on PNG was launched on November 19th at a press conference. Here we have interviewed roughly 350 leaders in the country from both the public and, and private sector. So for us it's very important to get an overview of what is happening. And, mm -hmm. In, in PNG from all different sectors really and, and all from different quarters and different people that can that have something to say about PNG because at the end of the day what we want to do is to deliver a balanced uh, report and it's not easy because as you know PNG unfortunately has a, <laughs> a bad reputation sometimes and, and, and we just discovered that a lot of uh, a lot of the time actually it's it's not true at all I think with the, the potential uh, are really more than, than, than the challenges, I would say. And having spent a year and having interviewed so many leaders and have been on the ground for so long, I can testify about that. The government has a raft of initiatives which include encouraging public-private partnerships and supporting smaller businesses that they believe will set the country's private sector on course to becoming an engine of growth. An interview with Prime Minister Peter O'Neill is featured in the publication, in which he gives views on a broad range of topics from what PNG has to do to achieve its target GDP growth this year of 6%, to whether momentum is now building in the country's infrastructural projects after a series of delays. The sea of change underway in Papua New Guinea is a major theme throughout OBG's new report, especially the shift in focus from the investment and construction phase of the country's $19 billion LNG venture to follow-on projects, which is set to usher in a new era of resource-driven growth in the coming years. PNG is now part of a very exclusive leader, a group of countries that are uh, LNG producers. And uh, these are countries that uh, the international community is looking at for, for energy. Uh, you're surrounded by countries uh, like uh, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, and uh, even China. Uh, they are starving for commodities, for natural resources, and obviously energy. So all of a sudden, PNG, it's a reality. It's a reality uh, not only in the South Pacific, but also globally. So it's a very interesting time. This is what we have found out this year. Uh, working in, in putting together the 2014 edition that for a long time PNG was just a promise and nowadays it's a reality so that's a very exciting time for all of us. The report considers the part that rising demand across Asia for energy and resources is playing in enabling the country to broaden its range of trading partners. The job is it's easier than other, than, than other countries in the region in the sense that people are quite outspoken. I think that there is a desire to communicate to the international business community. I think that there is a desire for PNG to be part of the global community, global arena. I think this is a country that for many years was a little bit in the shadow. <laughs> I myself worked in more than 20 countries, but uh, when I came here in PNG, I had very little knowledge of Papua New Guinea. It has been a, a journey of discovery for me as well to learn about, uh, uh, about this country. And uh, I, I feel that people want to communicate wants to communicate, want to reach out to show 
uh, what uh, this country has uh, when it comes to investment, what it has also, uh, uh, the human potential, I think it's great. Uh, we feel that working with Papua New Guineans is uh, is a is a enlightening <laughs> experience because we feel there is a young population here uh, that that wants to uh, be part of uh, of, a, of a wider world, uh, uh, ever more globalized. So, thanks to technology, this is happening for the first time, and we're very happy to be here to see that. It also looks in detail at the reforms that are being introduced, led by the amended regulatory framework governing PNG's mining sector. Other issues explored include the urbanization underway in Papua New Guinea, alongside the challenges the country faces in tackling poverty and redressing social imbalances. As always, the problem and, and the limit for PNG is in implementing uh, those changes, implementing these ideas, and the expenditure commitments, as you know, and we, people from, from the business community know that this is the, the biggest question mark. You know, numbers are there, and the government wants to spend more, wants to put more in the sectors that matter, Will they be able to? Uh, capacity is always an issue. Uh, but we're happy that the political will is in the right place. Containing a detailed sector-by-sector -sector guide for investors, it features a wide range of interviews with leading political, economic and business representatives from both the local and international scene, including the Australian Minister for Foreign Affairs, Julie Bishop. The publication is available in print or online. A curve of uh, learning, you know, in everything, in every project. So every person that comes in, they have to come with an open mind of, okay, this is a country that, that we are investing in the development, but not only the economic development, the social development. Uh, Papua New Guinea doesn't want to be, you know, the biggest city in the world, Port Moresby. It wants to be a sustainable country. It wants to be a, a country that is full of resources, knows how to use them, and has a healthy relationship you know, with the rest of the world, and develop with environmental consciousness, with social consciousness as well, uh, the country itself. And that is the story that we're looking uh, forward to, to telling. And that's all we have for you tonight. For more information, be sure to visit MTV online. That's mtv.com.pg forward slash business. Or to join the conversation, follow us on Twitter at businesspng using the hashtag businesspng. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Girari and this is businesspng.